Okay, so now we're going to talk about enzymes, which are the biological catalysts that allow all the cells that happen in your body to work. Metabolism is a whole bunch of chemical reactions that happens inside a cell. And they won't happen on their own. They need a catalyst to make them go. And if you remember from chemistry, a catalyst is something that makes a chemical reaction happen without being used up itself. Um, the key thing about enzymes is they're very, very specific for what they catalyze, so they only work on certain things. Um, that's because of some specificity built in the enzyme. It's, it's again an example of form follows function because we've got the idea that uh, there's these docks or holes on the enzyme in a three-dimensional shape that the molecules have to fit into and only the right molecules will fit in those holes on the enzymes. In general, all enzymes end in A's with ASE, um, and the first part of the enzyme usually tells you what it works on. So, for example, a lipase works on lipids, it's an enzyme that breaks apart lipids. Amylase here breaks apart starch. Uh, lactase breaks apart lactose, and you can get that in pill form if you're lactose intolerant. And cholinesterase breaks down uh, an, um, a neurotransmitter in your nervous system. Okay, so here we're looking at a, an enzyme structure. This is a pretty fancy three-dimensional picture of an enzyme. Um, most of the ones that we see we won't have anything like this. But the key thing here is just sort of a, a linguistic thing, a vocabulary word. The thing that we're going to break down is we call a substrate. And our substrate here is a bit of uh, RNA, and we'll talk about what that is when we get into genetics. But then we've got our enzyme, which is a protein, so it's a polymer of amino acids. And then someplace on our enzyme we've got one or more active sites. So these are the holes that I talked about previously that these substrates can, can get into. So these substrates are going to have to be able to fit into that active site and that's how the enzyme is going to catalyze the chemical reaction. Now most enzymes are made up of proteins but there are sometimes some other things that uh, can fit into an enzyme. There's a concept of coenzymes and cofactors which are metal ions or other molecules like vitamins uh, that have to attach to the enzyme to make it work and those are special cases and we'll talk about those later but we're just going to deal with the the concept of the protein only enzyme right now with its active site for its substrates. Now when we talk about the idea that all enzymes are catalysts we got to remember with chemical reactions we start out with our starting stuff which are the reactants and we end up with products what we're making and just like sort of if you were to graph um, you know, or take a look at something being pushed down a hill, you have to put some energy into something to make it happen before it goes on. Now in this example we've got a, a decomposition uh, exothermic type reaction because we've got energy being released. You can see that our, our energy in our reactants is much higher than that in our products. So this would be an anabolic, or sorry, catabolic type of reaction because the anabolic or when we build things and cats, catabolic reactions, cats tear things apart. So What's happening here is we have to add a bit of energy into this system to make it go. And you can think of it as sort of pushing somebody down a hill if you're tobogganing or skiing. You're at the top of a hill. You need to get that, give that little push so you can slide down the hill. And that push we, we call activation energy. Um, you can see without the enzyme it's much higher. It's a much higher hill to climb. But with the enzyme it's much lower. So that's in, in whole how enzymes work. They lower activation energy. You know, basically the way they do that is they put the substrates in position to, and again, depending on the type of reaction we're talking about, we've got a, a catabolic one here, so we'll talk about that. It stresses the bonds in those molecules, so it makes those bonds very hard to exist. It, it makes it stresses them, and you can think of them as pulling two magnets apart. You can pull them apart and they're still stuck together. It takes some energy, but if you pull hard enough, they separate. So that's what we're really doing with chemical reactions. If it's a catabolic reaction like we have here, we're breaking it apart. If it's an anabolic reaction, um, you know, this graph would look very different. It would look a lot more like this, okay, with our reactants here and our products here. But we'd have the same idea. We'd still have, you know, the, the hill at the top of it. Now, the way enzymes do this is sometimes described as a, a lock and key mechanism, and, and that works in a certain way because what we mean by lock and key is that the substrates, here our, our red circle and our uh, purple rectangle, are pulled into the active sites on this enzyme, and they sort of fit in there like a lock and a key. Now, the lock and the key 
analogy works, but it's not great because of some other things that are happening. It's not truly a just sort of a, a fit that magically happens or some other things that happen here. So we don't go with the lock and key mechanism. We tend to prefer to use something else entirely besides lock and key. And that term we tend to use is, is very descriptive. And again, it's the same idea, just a different way of talking about it, a little bit more descriptive. And that's the induced fit model. So what we're talking about in the induced fit model is that uh, there's actually an attraction that goes on between these substrates and these active sites. So it, it's things like hydrogen bonding, polar and nonpolar interactions, and the, the Paula Abdul chemistry of off, opposites attract and like charges repel that cause these substrates to actually fit into uh, the active sites. So again, because of something like hydrogen bonding or you know dipole interactions, these substrates will end up being drawn into these active sites. Now once that happens, we've actually changed the composition of what's going on in this, this protein. We've added some things, so that's going to change the chemistry of it. And that change in the, the shape and the structure of that enzyme is literally going to change its shape. It's going to call, cause a conformation shift, and that's going to cause those two substrates to become much closer together as the enzyme changes. And once that happens, that makes it much easier for a chemical bond to form between those two molecules to, to share electrons, if you will, to, to, cut, to allow the valent shells to overlap. Now, this process that I've shown is for an anabolic reaction where we're taking two molecules and bringing them together, but it would work for a catabolic reaction just in reverse instead of the enzyme changing shape by induced fit to bring the substrates closer together like we showed here, it would change shape so that these arms and the shape of this enzyme would would pull those two molecules apart and put an awful lot of stress on that chemical bond. So here's the key stuff the induced fit just to wrap up our little video here. Uh, the induced fit model it's the enzyme fitting to the substrate kinda like a lock and key but again it, it's, it's those mo molecular local rules of chemistry that are pulling those substrates in there once they get in the enzyme changes shape it changes its conformation and that helps catalyze the reaction, makes the bond easier to form or stresses the bond to break those molecules apart. And again, it's specific to the shapes of these substrates. As we saw in the last uh, little bit of the video, um, it's, it's shape specific. If the, if the shapes of these substrates aren't right, they don't fit in the active sites in that s you know, substrate cleft there, and then they won't bond the enzyme, the enzyme won't change shape, and you won't end up with a catalyzed reaction.